Good morning, it's Wednesday the 8th of June and where am I this morning? Well I'm down at Hollywood Arches. I'm looking up the Newton Arch Road and I'm panning around. Across the road there is the entrance into C.S. Lewis Square and the library is across the road there as well. And all the C.S. Lewis statues in there. I'm going to do a wee walk round or down the road, Newton Arch Road. And the lower Newton Arch Road is what they're really talking about. Iconic, historic. And this is halfway up. This is Hollywood Arches. And the trains used to run across here. There used to be a bridge. That's why it's called the Arches. And I'm going to dander down it. A lot of empty shops, the closure of the Ulster Bank across the road, indicative of everything shutting down uh, as regards banks. But there's a lot of empty shop fronts. And you have to be very, very careful crossing this road because uh, it's a uh, wee bit mantle. Anyway, here I go. One or two shops surviving. I'm trying not to point the camera at anybody because that's rude. A uh, big shop here, family shop, Wise Buys, has been here for generations, or it seems so, and it's part of the uh, Newton Arts picture. Now, if you want cheap durable, you go to Wise Buys. Uh, community hub and that's Bloomfield Avenue going up that way Townsley Street leading up to Cornswater across the road and this is uh, approaching the east side centre uh, community hub visitor centre call in here if you're ever about this place and there's the Lewis Square with all the Narnia figures And there's the uh, bridge over the river, the River Con, and there's the uh, the crest. And this is Conswater Bridge, widened in 1896, so presumably it was here before that. And there's the crest. And the greenway has all been developed. Now it looks pretty uh, sludgy at the minute, but actually it is a wildlife haven. 
and Belfast City Council have done a remarkable job and there's kingfishers and there's herons and there's all sorts, even possibly otters on this river and it runs for miles interconnecting uh, communities in and around East Belfast. I'm not going to be able to Some nice pieces of street art and we've got a McDonald's on the corner just before where it branches off for the Albert Bridge Road. And this uh, piece of street art is one of the best in Belfast and it's, uh, you know, it details all the top people that have come out of this city and done us proud. urban garden oh, it's absolutely brilliant in there so splitting off uh, towards the Albert Bridge Road and there's the Belfast glider heading down nearly introduced yeah a few years now quite controversial Empty shops, empty shops. On the piggies, on the corner. And the piggies everywhere always do good. So there's the main part of the Newton Arch Road. You'll, you'll notice quite a number of <coughs> flags and stuff. Healthy street food. I'm all into that. Uh, yeah, you'll notice a, a, a lot of uh, flags and stuff like that. Union Jacks. We're at Riddle Street. A lot of new housing. Which is good to see. This is the East Belfast uh, Constitution Club. Know nothing about it. Tram shop. Well, this is the Union Jack souvenir shop. World flag suppliers apparently. And if you want to buy any uh, loyalty type memorabilia and royal family memorabilia, it's in here. Loyalist uh, piece of street art. You get these all over the place. down in East Belfast. Nice wee bit of street art going on here at Rhythm Street. Used to have the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum and now that's gone. A oh, lady biker here. And I've just spotted Asha from Poland and she's on a 650 Kawasaki Ninja. What a gal, what a gal. Right safe. Yeah. And there's the Newton calf across the road where you can uh, they they offer you a challenge. Uh, I think you you have to eat a full, full all-star fry with everything uh, multiplied by about four and you have to eat it in under I don't know 30 minutes. So, George. 
where's the seagull day a green grocers by the look of them And this is Portview Trade Centre. I have very old round it. Uh, dates from way back. Uh, is that? Uh, there's a there's a date up there. 1911. And it was a hive of industry and all the rest of it. And they're trying to get it up. All the industry, the the traditional industry of linen and 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 uh, milling and all the rest of it gone and they're trying to uh, open it up for small business units. And unfortunately a lot of these shops, you know, looking pretty rough. Oh, there's Glover's. Must be uh, Glover's. There's two or three Glover shops on the road here, and uh, James Brown, funeral directors. You know, it's synonymous with this road. But uh, Glover's have been here forever. And there's another another Glover's Glover's Hardware. That was Glover's Fancy Goods. Iconic shops, and you know, here for generations. Family family run. Second time around. Mullins Butcher, been here forever. And this is Con Street. And again, all new housing back there, and a wee bit of history here. So there's an east side uh, Lives Heritage Trail. Mary was born on Dundella Avenue in East Belfast in 1892 and lived to the grand old age of 90. So this is one of the old residents and this details her life. And there she is on her wedding day. And there she is. Mary, Mrs. Melville was known for her good advice. And there she is. As she was. And there's, there's quite a number of those uh, sort of wee portrayals, wee portraits. I'm looking across at Hornby Street, and right on the corner here is an iconic building. That's the Great Eastern Bar. And it's got George Best down below here. remembered and this bar has been here since 1890 and it's synonymous again with the area and the architecture on it is uh, you know, quite historic Cafes.
Yeah. And there's the date. And you can just imagine the uh, the shipyard workers, because they would have come down D Street. And there's a big mural dedicated to them. I'll get back a wee bit and let you see that. They would have come down a D Street here, across the Iron Bridge, and made their way, many of them, and dropped into the bar before going home on a Friday. And that's long gone. On the Titanic remembered, hard and roof remembered, on this gable wall at the end of D Street, when Belfast was great. And as the man said about the Titanic, it was all right when it left Belfast. So the Great Eastern Bar, uh, important watering hole and community centre on the Newton Arge Road. At one time, this uh, road was was known for its abundance of churches. And here's one of them. This is Megan Memorial Church of the Nazarene, and it's been here a long time. In fact, it's been here since 1889. Look at the old architecture there. And unfortunately these churches are so, so difficult to maintain. You know, you can spend thousands on them every year because of, you know, damp and everything else. And, uh, they're, they're not really practical, you know, they might be architecturally significant and all the rest of it, but they're not really practical. And the rain gets in, and they're hard to heat. And this is uh, just on Montreux Street. Nice wee bit of street art going on down there. And this is the new, this is the part of the, uh, the block just before you come to Skinos Centre. I'll we'll talk more about it in a minute. Westbourne supporters of Glentorn. Glentorn are big in this area. And a lot of uh, photographs here detailing the uh, the ravages committed by the IRA. Nine murdered, twelve murdered, two murdered, nine murdered, three murdered. You know, and and uh, you know, from a, a Protestant point of view. All we hear about is the Catholic dead. Well, there was plenty of uh, Protestant dead murdered by the IRA. And this is young Leanne Murray, 13 years old, murdered in the Schenkel bomb, 23rd of October, 1993. A life cut short. And there's a whole list of the other atrocities 
No, there are atrocities of course on both sides, no getting away from that, but uh, you know, let's, let's remember that they were on both sides. This is the Daphne Fish and Chip. And this is the Skinos, Skinos or Skinos Center. And it's uh, the center of Methodism. And uh, it has a restaurant and a conference center and all sorts of uh, things going on here. And would you believe, I, th I think there's a church in here too. And would you believe this is a center one of the main centres in Belfast for the uh, the teaching of of, Har of Irish, the Irish language. But then, back in the day, you know, going back into the 1800s, it was actually the Pres Presbyterians who uh, who kept the Irish language alive, and people forget that. And these are these are the hanging gardens of in Lower Newton Arge Road and they water them and, and they're, uh, they're specially designed all these plants to be you know to climb up and down and they're, they're really beautiful whenever they're in colour another big mural remembering the sacrifice the absolutely shocking sacrifice in World War One, and that's the Ulster Tower. And I would regard this. Go ahead. Many would regard this whole area as being the heartland of. Protestant East Belfast. And this is the Beaver Bar across the road. And McMaster Street just back there would, uh, would be listed as by many as being the heartland of East Belfast and Ulster loyalism. Whether it is or not, I don't know. And we're looking up Templemore Avenue. Templemore Baths up there, and many people used to go for a, a Saturday wash up at Templemore Baths because there's no uh, bathrooms in those wee terrace houses. And this is just a, a, a sweep round of. Freedom Corner as it's known. Leading on to the Albert Bridge Road, Campbellmore Avenue and all the rest of it. Some building. And all sorts of street art going on on the Lower Newton Arch Road. And then remembering the past. Northern, or Belfast famous, or this road famous for paper, soap, medicines, uh, linseed or flax oil. That gave rise to the production of linen. The third of Ireland's spinning mills were located in Belfast, producing all, of all Irish linen half. And there's a lady at one of the, the bobbins or whatever. Many mills were built on Conswater River. And that's uh, surviving Newtonards Road on O'Cork Mill. Demolished Grove Flex Mill, uh, Spinning Avenue, Loop Bridge Mill. Children worked part time from 
the age of 10, full 10 at the age of 13. The linen industry started to boom around 1700s due to shortage of raw materials for cotton mills and flex fibre stronger than cotton fibre but less flexible made into luxurious lace and damasks all on board the Titanic 6,000 linen tablecloths, 20,000 linen bedsheets and this is Tower Street. And this is a Carson, a significant fig figure in uh, unionism, a founder. And this is a wee uh, memorial to the dead in World War I. And it's, uh, Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant mural. Have to agree. Brilliant, brilliant mural. You know, the artistry that has created it. Uh, shut shops. And there's another mural. An old mural delivering a message. Peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be what's that? That word it can only be achieved by understanding. I'm trying to point to a better future than what we had throughout the 70s and 80s and 90s when places were being blown to bits and innocent people were being killed. This is the yard, big uh, gym and fitness place. Elam, hope, love and peace, forgiveness and freedom. That's what we want. So that's a new church, and this is an old church. Look at the size of this building. And we're down opposite McMaster Street, which has some of the uh, oldest uh, houses dating from way back. Uh, oldest shipyard type houses, two up, two downs. And they've all been refurbed, of course. And, uh, you know, McMaster Street is a special place today. And I have done a video on that. It's a special type of architecture. And hundreds and hundreds of other streets were like this. This is where the ship shipyard workers... <laughs> people do it. This is where the, the shipyard workers would have lived. And reared families and uh, all the other all the other uh, streets like this are, are, are largely gone and this is a massive massive big uh, Masonic Masonic uh, hall building so where are we outside now another big church and these churches, sadly, are largely empty, and they're, they're mostly all listed. And, and the problem is, the congregation and the denomination are expected to maintain them. And, you know, it's thousands and thousands of pounds. So this is St. Patrick's, um, and it's thousands and thousands of pounds every year. This is the Church of Iron, St. Patrick's Church. And it's significant historically, and it's significant architecturally, but, you know, it's, uh, it's empty. And 
there's a wee uh, notice board for it and other churches like it are empty because people have largely abandoned the church because the church is seen as irrelevant and that's sad but you know I can't really argue with a lot of people over the last number of years the the church has been irrelevant it hasn't spoken up but it's been quiet about so many things that are totally anti the Bible this is Freedom Corner I have never videoed Freedom Corner ever and we're, there's the Island Resource Centre and this is all uh, loyalist type uh, street art and murals this is Saunders Close and you see piles of American tourists and Japanese tourists standing back to click their cameras and I'm sure it is quite intimidating to uh, Catholic people if they're on this road and there's a uh, 1920 to 1922, the B Specials and the UDR. 200 members killed in the Troubles. Many shot whenever they were off duty. 54 B Specials killed by the IRA. They were disbanded in 1970. I don't know whether you agree with this or don't agree with it. Uh, but this is part of the landscape here and as such, uh, you know, I'm including it. Another shrine paying homage to a paramilitary volunteer. Another church. This is Westburn. Interesting tower at the side of it. This is Westburn Presbyterian Community Church. Oh, it's got a wee educational notice board beside it. We'll see if it has anything to say. Uh, Now here's another uh, piece of history here. A lot of uh, folks were immigrants into Belfast in the 1930s. And this tells the story of Emily uh, Gibson who had uh, married um, Pasquella DeSano in 1932. And that was a big thing then. And Ice cream is still being served by the fourth generation of DeSanos on the Newton Ard Road. And there's a lot of Italian ice cream shops in these on these streets. In Barnbridge where I came up there was Fuscos and Scapatuses and, and, and all sorts. I'm going to cross that window again. Watch myself crossing. Oh. This is a more uh, Queen's Jubilee uh, celebration, uh, paraphernalia, flags and bunting and all the rest of it. And there's uh, the Yardman sculpture and I have detailed it before. There we go. Titanic centenary sculpture. This 
sculpture honours all generations of yard men and is a tribute to their culture, legacy and life, to the memory of the men who built the giants and there's hardened roof cranes in the background. And another uh, educational notice board. Look, look, this is what this is what came over the uh, the D Street Bridge and, and headed up D Street past uh, the Great Eastern. And there's the uh, gantries of, of various ships being built in the background. At its peak, over 30,000 people were employed in the shipbuilding industry in Belfast. A high proportion of them lived in the terrace streets on the Newton Arge Road. And there was people uh, who died on the Titanic. And this is uh, remembering John Harper, a Baptist pastor from Glasgow. As the Titanic was going down, he gave his life jacket to another man and continued to preach the gospel until the end. And there he is. Westburn Church across the road opened in 1880, known as the Shipyard Church because many of its members worked in Harden Roof. Four oh one. Brilliant, brilliant uh, memorial sculpture. And again, here's a, another memorial to uh, those who fought and died in World War One, World War Two, for valor. But this is primarily remembering World War One. And all the old houses largely are gone and they've been replaced by brand new houses. Well, not brand new now. And this is Susan Street. And quite a number of the shop fronts closed. And another wee memorial. Remembrance. And folks on the other side of the religious divide cry out for justice for their people. And there's a cry here as well. But the cry from, uh, so many would argue that the cry from Protestant uh, uh, localities is, is, is ignored. And this notice board details 19th and 20th, early 20th century East Belfast, city's industrial powerhouse. And that coin was unearthed at the Skeno Centre. A room this is the bomb damage uh, done during the, uh, the Belfast Blitz. The place was levelled and a thousand people were killed and it's, you know, people don't even realise that Belfast was heavily bombed and Belfast was a hive of industry. In fact, Harlan Wheat built ships that fought in, the, in, the, in World War II but also uh, built uh, Valentine tanks and, and all, uh, other uh, you know, munitions were made in Belfast too, so it was, it was it was a place that the Germans wanted to knock out. And they made a good attempt of it. Another big church. So I'm coming down, and this remembers Dr. Pitt, a local doctor in the area. This is Bryson Street, and there's the rain. We're never far from the rain in Belfast. And this is the type of housing that you've got now. And this church across the road is very similar in, in, in looks to all the other ones that I have videoed. I don't even know the name of this church. 
because uh, I don't see any notice board up. Another uh, mural. Oh, that's a particularly good one, pointing to the future. There's C.S. Lewis up on the right hand side, and dancing, and Queen's University, and, and industry remembered. And uh, you are never too old to set another goal for a goal to or to dream a new dream. There's the city hall. And this uh, mural was provided and sponsored by Bally Mac Friendship Centre Mural Arts. Uh, it's been up for quite a while now. And there's the Dove of Peace. me uh, almost finished my we uh, walk down the road and there's a roundabout down at the bottom end here here's the Belfast glider or one of them and I've done videos on this Just two buses put end to end. And this is the Ship of Dreams. Uh, big mural at the end. Telling the of that fateful night in 1912. And back there we've got hands across the divide. Making friends making friends with your neighbor.